In this lecture, we will cover a concept of center of buoyancy and I would just like to explain it using this problem. In this problem, I have a cylinder. This is a cylindrical shape and cylinder is like this. Inside the cylinder, I have put a cone. This is a cone inside the cylinder and it is having length up to L by 2 and L by 2 is empty and the total length is L and this is the cross section area A of the base of cone and the cross section area of cylinder it both are having same cross section area. There are two springs or spring constant K1, K2 and the whole arrangement is now placed in liquid with a density rho. It can be any liquid water. The, the density or the mass of the combination is enough that it doesn't float. It is trying to sink and we are holding it using these springs. We, we have to find the ratio of the two springs K1 upon K2 such that the system remains horizontal. Now in this problem, the whole thing, it's a very simple problem, whole thing is basically on the center of buoyancy. So when you take an object and say the object is of some shape and suppose or let me take a very simple case. If you take a cylinder itself and if the mass of cylinder is not uniform, it may have a center of gravity here and when it is immersed in water, the buoyant force will not act here. This is center of gravity, so buoyancy doesn't act on center of gravity. Buoyancy is not concerned about its density. Buoyancy, its, its center of gravity is dependent on its density. But the buoyancy is dependent on the density of the liquid which is surrounding it. And the volume which is displaced. So the center of buoyancy is the center of volume you can say. It is independent of the weight distribution within the volume. Weight distribution within the volume only determines the center of gravity. So as far as this cylinder is concerned, if you look at the volume, the center of buoyancy will be here. And what will be that? It will be area into the length into the rho and G is the buoyant force which is acting upwards. Now, where is the center of gravity of the cylinder? The mass of cylinder is M1 and mass of cone is M2. So as far as this cylinder is concerned, the force will act here as M1G. And what about the cone? The cone has its center of gravity here, which is how much it is if the height of cone is h, then this, this distance, which is the center of gravity of cone, is h upon 4. And since h is l upon 2, the whole distance is l, h is l upon 2, so it is l upon 8. So this force let me write K1 here. This force of cylinder will act as uh, here at this point. Now let this be X and let this be point Y. First of all, in such problems, find the total vertical forces, balance them, and then find moment about one of the points, say X or Y. So the total forces which are acting here vertically upwards, let the extension here and here be X because I want to keep it horizontal. That is how I have to choose the spring constant. So this, the compression, not the extension, the compression in the, the spring has to be same to keep it horizontal. I made it that way so that it is simple. So the compression be delta and delta here. So what are the vertical forces which are upwards? 
the upward forces are the spring forces so f vertical which are in upward direction is k1 delta plus k2 delta because of the spring what is the bound force is a rho l and g is the upward bound force there is no other upward force the vertical forces downwards are m1g plus m2g there is no other force which is acting vertically downwards so this simply gets equated so k1 plus k2 delta plus a rho lg is equal to m1g plus m2g one is this expression you can get now other expression is you take the moment about this point you could have taken that point also so when you take the moment about this point at the equilibrium the clockwise and the anti clockwise moments will balance with each other so let me take the clockwise moments about x so the moments are uh, which is the clockwise that will be m to g into l upon 8 with this moment then m1 because of the cylinder plus m1 g into l upon 2 and there is as far as the clockwise moment is concerned these are the two forces and the anti-clockwise moment this is clockwise this is anti-clockwise the anti-clockwise moment about this would be the up thrust which is a l rho g into l upon 2 this is the crucial point here it will act at the center of volume and the other vertical force upward this will not give any moment another moment will be given by k2 delta plus k2 delta into l so you get the value as k2 delta into l is equal to m2 g l upon 8 plus m1 g l upon 2 minus a l square rho g upon 2 so you get k2 delta as m2 upon 8 plus m1 upon 2 into g minus a l rho g upon 2 similarly you can write either you can find it from here or you can simply take moment about y you will get k1 delta as let me take the moments also so it becomes clear now when you take moment about this point what are the let me draw a line as far as that point is concerned let me take the anti-clockwise first moments and the anti-clockwise moment will be one is this m1g so that is m1g upon l upon 2 another is because of the m2g and here be careful m2g the distance will be l minus l upon 8 because you have to see this distance which is 7 l upon 8 uh, which is the other force which is acting anti-clockwise on that no other force now let me take the clockwise moments the clockwise moments will be one is k1 delta into l because it is at the distance l and another is plus a rho g l square upon 2 now equate these forces and you get k1 delta as g m1 upon 2 plus 7 m2 upon 8 minus a rho g l upon 2 
now you take the ratio that is what I want k1 upon k2 would be g gets cancelled m1 upon 2 plus 7 m2 upon 8 minus a rho l upon 2 upon m2 upon 8 plus m1 upon 2 minus a rho l upon 2. So this is the ratio of the two spring constant to keep it horizontal. The whole thing whatever I did was basically just to show the difference between the center of gravity and the center of volume.